Okay, so that's grounding, and we'll do that. And then we have things that are related to uh, what Jim was already doing. Um, synchronizing is another wonderful thing that you can do. And synchronizing means just you're going to play the same thing that somebody else is playing right when they play it. You're, you're, sometimes it's called uh, shadowing or mirroring, and you're just doing the same thing with somebody else. And that's a great way to connect with people. It creates rapport, it creates a sense of empathy and connection. So as we play, I'm going to be just copying you. Basically, it's, it's not copying in that you do it after, but you do it with the person. And that's called synchronizing. Okay? Synchronizing is playing the same thing at the same time. Uh, related to that is echoing, which is just playing what somebody plays after they play it. So if somebody's playing a little rhythm, like I hear somebody playing a... I'm echoing myself right now. Or if somebody's just going... side of the phrase. Um, it's easier if somebody leaves space. <laughs> so they're not overlapping. That was, that was kind of an over, overlapping rhythms. But uh, whatever it is, somebody might be sitting across and you might, they might just be playing a two, three, four. You know, that's what they're doing. So you just answer them. <laughs> So yeah, echoing again, and see it's fun, and it, it says, what echoing says is, hey, I heard what you played, and I like it because I'm going to do the same thing. And so you'll be amazed at how powerful that can be when you're playing, when you're playing the group, and you just, just copy somebody or echo them, also called imitation, imitating, and you have fun, and it creates this little connection between people in the group. And you can do that as a, as a facilitator. You can just, you know, just echo people here and there. Uh, it could be one person, or you can kind of spread it around, you know, as you're playing, you echo different people, and they may notice, and they may look at, wait, I played that, and I heard it again. Who's doing that? Oh, Margaret did that. Oh, that's cool. Hey, Margaret. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> so it, it really creates these little connections, and it's just, a, a, again, pure music, just just music. Uh, another thing related to those is what we call matching. And matching is playing something that fits. So, say, my clothes match, right? I'm wearing an ensemble. And think about that. We play in an ensemble, and what we play matches. What we wear matches. That's why it's an ensemble. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, so, so matching is what we just all do automatically pretty much. It's just we enter into the rhythm. So let's try that right now. I'm going to play something and then you just play something that fits with it.
<laughs> All right, good. Which brings me to the next technique <laughs> is modeling. Modeling is doing something in the hopes that other people will also do it, right? We model, model for people, modeling. He's a model citizen. We should all be like him, right? Or her, right? So modeling is just doing something that you would um, like to see done or that you hope would, would be done, right? So it's modeling. It includes um, using instruments. So right now I'm modeling how to play the cajon, right? So if you've been watching me play the cajon, I didn't have to tell you how to play the cajon. You could, I could say, hey, Betty, I'd come over and play the cajon. You'd probably copy what I'm doing, right? I mean, you wouldn't just, you're not gonna go like this and maybe you would, but you, you probably would do something similar to what you saw me do, right? Well, actually, I know you already play the cajon, so. Yeah. <laughs> so modeling is just that. It's just, it's just doing something to show other people, here's a possibility, or again, relating to the guardian thing, you know, like I might model how to play the triangle, and I might model how to play the djembe, and show people. It's just learning without being overt about it, or teaching without being overt about it. It's just, just doing the behavior. And you think about ways uh, people behave, you know, we say, wow, I'd like to, I really admire that person. So you kind of do what they do, right? Somebody you know that you can think of people you know that are just like the nicest people, right? And we all know people like that are just so pleasant to be around and we think, I really need to be more like that. <laughs> the way they talk to people, the way they look at people, the way they make you feel when you're with them. And you think, wow, I don't know. they're a really great model for me. You know? So that's all it is, modeling. So uh, you can do that too. So I, in, that, in that little interaction we just had, I stopped playing and it kind of worked a little, but not as much as I was hoping. So I, <laughs> I started playing the beat, da, 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 and everybody kind of even did this big buildup. Right? So that's, and that's sort of a natural tendency. You know, when you introduce an element, people tend to entrain to that. We tend to kind of go with the herd, if you will, or the flock, or the school of fish, sort of like that, that kind of energy. And you can affect the group that way. Okay. Um, a little eye contact. Gesturing never hurts if you want to make it a little more overt, right? A little more, <laughs> you know, you can, you can do that and add to it. But uh, it's, it's, a, it's, you know, modeling can borderline on the conducting, conduction. But it can also just be something you do, right? Without, without making it like, here, you need to do this. You know, it should just be something that you do. Um, Next, there's a couple more that we're going to talk about. Um, one is modulation, and this gets a little more technical. It's about as fancy as, it, as the techniques will get. And modulation is changing basically one element in the music so that it changes the music, and so you feel like there's something new that started, but it doesn't interrupt the music or change it that much because you're only working with one element of music. For example, I might change the sound of my instrument, but I don't change the pattern I'm playing. So I could be playing, right? and this has a, and if we're all playing, then that would have a certain quality to it. But if I, could, if I go from, this, now I'm changing the timbre and the volume together. So it, I not only reduce my influence, but it changes the sound. So if I do that, and I do that continue, and that's a permanent change. I'm not going back and forth, all right? Permanent change, change. Now it's gonna have a new feel. The music's gonna have a new feel. I could change all kinds of things about the, the way I'm playing. I could change to a different instrument. I could change to body percussion change to my voice. So all of these little changes will have different kinds of impact and they'll have a different effect. I could even change the feel you know I could change the kind of the rhythmic feel from a straight feel to a 
a more bouncy feel, swing feel. That would be changing the, the, the meter or the feel of it, the general feel. Um, lots of things you can change. But the idea is that you just change one thing. And thereby, over time, if you changed one thing but you did three of those from here to, say, five minutes later, things could be totally different. And that's the idea, is that if you can get to totally different from where you are now, but just a little step at a time. And that's called modulation. So we modulate things. In, in music, we talk about keys and modulating the key. You know, it can be in the key of C, and then we're going to modulate to the key of D or something. Most Barry Manilow songs modulate several times. <laughs> they always go up. They raise the, the whole pitch up, and it gives it this freshness, right? And it really sounds like a new section. It sounds like this, oh, something happened. The energy changed. What happened? Well, they just changed the key. Everything else is the same, but they have a new tonal center. And they, that's a little technical musically, but just so you know when that happens, you, you, maybe you're listening to the song and you just know something happened, but you don't know what. That's, that could be one of the things that happened. They change the key, they, they elevate the, the tonality, and it refreshes the music. So that's something you can try. Um, the last three things are, we talk about increasing energy. So we can add energy to the music, um, and we're gonna intensify the music. So intensification or intensifying is another technique. And that is, you know, same thing that Jim did with this, you can do just by playing louder. So you're, you're, if I'm playing here, so if I do that, chances are ooh, the energy is going to come up. Now, it's a little slower, it takes a little more time. But uh, that's okay. I mean, if we have time, <laughs> if we have the time, it's okay. So you'd be surprised how much you can change the volume just by playing louder. For example, uh, same things for same thing for playing softer. So that's called um, decreasing the energy or calming. So calming can be playing softer, lowering the volume. It can also be slowing down. Same thing with intensification can also be increasing the speed. form of intensification. When we talk about intensification, we're usually talking about volume and or tempo. It could also be the sound quality or, or the timbre. Uh, I'll give you an example. If I wanted to talk to Bill and I wanted to make, I wanted to, uh, make my words seem more intense, I don't have to raise the volume, I can just change the way I'm talking to Bill. And it could sound like, whatever I'm saying is really important. <laughs> Even though the volume is the same. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I could even get softer, but it's super intense. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> or I could say, Bill, but what I'm trying to tell you. Right. So I'm just I'm changing the quality of my voice. And it has a different meaning, right? So that's still intensification. So it's inter interesting, because you can still musically you can kind of do stuff like that. Uh, same thing with calming. I could I could keep the volume I say the same, but I could use a completely different quality of voice. And it just has a whole different effect, Bill. <laughs> Good morning. Good night. Good night. All right. <clears throat> so um, you can use a, a calming can be just lowering the volume, uh, and that is different from the last technique. These are eight techniques now that we're at the end of. So. The last technique is what we call fading, and that is relating to what Jim talked about earlier, which used the word receding, right? Sure. You did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, receding is, or fading, we're gonna call it fading, because that's what's in notes. But fading is just gradually taking yourself out of the picture, so it's different than calming, because calming, the goal of calming 
is to either lower the volume or slow the tempo down. So you're changing the music. Uh, the goal of fading, even though you might use the same technique, you might, you might fade your volume, but the goal is not to have the group fade the volume. The goal is to remove yourself from influencing the group. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you still want the group to keep going. You just want them to keep going without you. <laughs> or with you, but not as a leader. Right? So you're kind of joining the group, you're just equalizing yourself in the picture. So that everybody isn't like looking at you like, what are we supposed to do next? You know, they, you kind of want to like give control over. So it's about fading is all about increasing the autonomy of the group members. Autonomy in this case, meaning, you know, the, the sense of self-determination and I get to control what I'm doing. I get to decide what I'm doing. So we want to have people feel like they don't have to follow you. They can decide, you can decide, you can decide, you can decide what, what it is you want to do, what, how you're going to play. When you're doing something like this where you constantly change your directions, how do you, how do you get them to differentiate that between are they going to you know, follow your softness or know that you're just going to fade out? Well, there's different ways of fading actually. So fading is, a, we think about fading the volume, mm -hmm. but I would say you could use a different word. Uh, to think about it. Fading could mean you reduce your volume, but it can also mean, and you're not going to keep going to zero necessarily. So if I start fading my volume, if I start fading by decreasing my volume, uh, if the group starts to lower their volume, I might have to come back in a little bit. But another way to fade out is I can come back and then, you know, keep the volume going. Another way to execute the fading goal is to play less. So you just make more space in your playing. So if I'm playing, I could change. I could just start doing this and then pretty soon I'm really not playing that much. Or you know, I could just stay here and just hardly do anything. Just play once in a while and then the group's probably going to keep going. I could get up and walk around and they're still going. You know, so fading isn't necessarily fading your volume. It could be, but you can find other ways to fade as well. I could switch to a different instrument that's not so influential. I could go to an egg shaker and play it loud, but it's not gonna have as much, as much impact as this. Does that, you got yeah. the picture? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, so you can fade in different ways. So it's, it can be volume, it can be density, of your playing, it could be your instrument choice, you know, all those sorts of things. All right. So those are our eight techniques. So it's a lot of stuff, right? Some of them are fairly basic, you know, increase, uh, in increasing the volume or tempo, decreasing. Um, grounding certainly is pretty straight ahead. So we had grounding, we had synchronizing, playing the same thing. We had echoing which is playing something after somebody. We have matching, which is playing something that fits with somebody else. We had intensifying, right, increasing. We had calming, which is the opposite of intensifying. We have modulating, which is changing one thing, essentially, about the music, element of music element of music, so changing the meter, changing the tempo, changing the sound, those kinds of things. And then we have fading. All right, so those are a lot of things. We're gonna work on them. You're gonna get lots of time to practice those. And so right now, we're just gonna have another little short experience where I will do a lot of those things and you'll get to see kind of how they work. All righty? All right, let's...